If you've played golf in the last 10 years, I'm without doubt that you will have tried to tuck your right elbow in either in your backswing or on your downswing. I'm gonna tell you exactly why you should not be doing that. A big warm welcome back to the channel. Gosh, what a week it's been. So many more new subscribers. I really appreciate you all checking out my channel and saying all the wonderful things about my content. Always very much appreciated and I will always comment, respond to any comments left. Thank you. Today, we're talking about the right arm. Now, if you've watched anything on YouTube, over the last 10 years, there would have been some reference to tucking the right arm in so that you can get more from the inside. I even watched a video, I even watched a video the other day by Danny Maud and Pete Cowan. They're talking about their right wrist at impact. There, there is so much reference with the right arm and when you're trying to corrupt your right arm in a position, you are taking away the variables that are actually trying to help you. So if a right arm is working over the top, if the right arm is trying to lengthen, so you see this over the top motion, and the reason why that over the top motion is happening is to fix your slice that you hit, because when you come into the golf ball, you see the right shoulder over the top, you, and then you see these big cuts out to the right. That right shoulder coming over the top, this right arm flaring high and over is a response to that ball flight. Understand that that right arm in the right elbow elevation that everybody is trying to teach you to tuck under, trying to teach you to get that right hand and that right wrist in front of you to put pressure on the pressure on the handle. They didn't actually reference pressure on the handle. In fact, I didn't even watch all of it because it made me annoyed just from the opening segment because we have got to stop trying to fix symptoms and deal with the ingredient that causes the symptom. So if you're trying to fix your right arm in position Honestly, it's like driving the car with the handbrake on. It's you trying to accelerate and yet you've got a brake on. The right arm needs to be understood. And when you understand it, you'll appreciate why you will never, ever, ever have to work on trying to tuck it in in order to get the right arm in front of the body. The right arm in front of the body in, to enable this club head to track back, this club head to get more from the inside. The club head's more from the inside and the ball goes out to the right. See that skill there? If that goes out to the right, this shot here I've hit from the inside at 13 degrees. Well, why isn't it drawn then? If path is the answer and tucking the right elbow in is the answer, why didn't it draw? Then what you then start to get is you get the right arm tucked in and now what you've got to do is you've got to turn your wrist down. And so you've now got a tucked in right arm, a, a bowed left wrist in an effort to hit some sort of draw that starts to the right and bends away to the left. Well, let me tell you, folks, if that's what you've been trying to do, God help you, because it's absolute horseshit. Sorry, get a bit frustrated because honestly, you guys deserve to play the golf of your dreams. And it's so easy to do, but if we keep on going down this path of trying to jam people, round peg, square hole syndrome of tucking the right arm in, elbows in, in an effort to try to get people more from the inside, you're absolutely wasting your time. So Stuart, okay, you've told us what not to do. Tell us what to do. All right, now I've got your attention. First of all, if you're working on the right arm and you're trying to tuck your right arm in, 
what you're trying to do is to get the golf club from the inside. If you're trying to get the golf club from the inside, you are trying to hit a draw. Because if you were coming more from the inside and you were hitting fades, you wouldn't want to get more inside it, would you? Because I've just approached the golf ball from the inside at 4.8 degrees, but the face was open to the path. I'm now going to come more from the inside, even more from the inside on this one. And now all of a sudden the golf ball's gone to the left. So I was 5.4 from the inside, now the ball's gone to the left. So I made two different golf swings. One had a face open to the path and one that was close to the path. The path stayed the same. My right arm was tucked in both of them. The reason why it was tucked is because when we make a backswing, when I mean tucked, I mean folded. It had bend in it. When we make a backswing, let's just understand that if I kept both arms locked out, so I'm going to lock both of my arms out and make a backswing, now I'm going to lift my club up and now I'm going to set the golf club to the best of my ability. That's what a backswing would look like. If you've seen anyone do that in the world, drop me a line. Because if they have, for any amount of time, they'll be in traction. <laughs> so therefore, if the left arm is moving across the body to some degree, and it does to a small amount, so it does, the left arm does move across your body to some amount, and I put my right arm on the club. When I move the arm across my body, this right one gives way. Then what happens is we have some forearm rotation and as I have that forearm rotation, look how the right elbow then kicks back in front of my chest. So I've got an element of arm that moves across the body, and then I have an element of forearm rotation. So the arm moves across the body to a degree, and then we have forearm rotation. Look where the right elbow is in my body. I make a backswing, all of a sudden this right elbow is in a, in a pretty decent spot. So if I if I lifted the arms up, which is what we do in a backswing, we lift the arms up in a backswing, we have forearm rotation, and how much have you heard out there, oh, don't have forearm rotation, because that's all bad for you, because forearm rotation means that you're rolling the club face over. Well, as we know, if you haven't checked it out, my forearm rotation video, forearm rotation has absolutely nothing to do with face angle. Forearm rotation is simply changing the pitch of the club shaft. Wrist angles and grip changes the orientation of the face. So if we do have arm lift and we do have forearm rotation and a little bit of a track across the body, when I now make a back swing, my right arm's in a really nice spot. But if the face was wide open, which it is now, this right arm would try to sit high in order to make the face point at the target. So when you see these tips on trying to tuck your right elbow in, and then when you blast it out to the right, you then try to get someone to bow your left wrist to make it go straight, you are adding layer upon layer of faulty movement. So, Understand then, the arm lift goes up, there is forearm rotation, it does track across the body, and then the body turns. If we then understand that if people don't use their pelvis appropriately, and they start to move sideways with their pelvis, their chest can't rotate to the amount mine does, because my hip rotation has increased. So watch that again, I move my body sideways, I, I short turn my chest because my hip is blocking me off. If I kept my right arm in a good position, that's a, the length of my backswing. So that's when you start to see overrun and then you see the right elbow pop out. The right elbow is not the fix, the pelvis is the fix to then change the arm. So you understand that this right arm is symptomatic, symptomatic of the changes or the poor movement that we've made in a backswing. A poor movement that almost could have started from setup in the grip series. I know, 
I got it in there, didn't I? I got the grip in there. It was another video and I'm talking about grip. Who freaking knew that the grip was so important? And I had someone comment the other day, I don't think any of us disregard the importance of the grip. But what I said in that video is that for me to change a grip, someone's standing on the mat, there's the golf club, they're hitting the golf ball, I see their grip, I go down, I change their grip, I come back up, they hit a shot. I go down, I change their grip, I come back up, they hit a shot. They go down, I change their grip, I come back up. That's how I change a golfer's grip until they know and feel what the grip change is like. And so yes, people do appreciate a good grip, for, but for a coach to change a grip, I might have to do 50 lunges. <laughs> 50 lunges, I might have to put my bacon sandwich down. I might have to take my hands out of my pockets. Therefore, grip change and grip application is absolutely crucial. If you're not understanding where the hands need to be placed on the rubber end, you're missing a trick. So therefore, this right arm is responsible for the right-handed golfer taking that you're a right-handed biased player is giving you the opportunity to try to fix and get the golf club in the right spot. A really simple drill to fixing your right arm. We take the golf club, put my left hand across and underneath my right elbow. The job of the left hand is to pull the elbow in front of your chest. And so you then start to just isolate this lift up and some forearm rotation. The more you lift it up and the handle sort of forehead height would be good because you're trying to get the handle at the same height as the right shoulder if you can. Then you make a backswing. Then as you made a backswing, you can see how the, ar the arm and the elbow has started to look in a decent spot. We don't really want the arm swinging too far back and behind and if you're having to do that I would look at what your pelvis is doing. If you can then start to feel how that right elbow gets pulled in front because of the left arm, now as you start to make that, that movement in the golf swing we're then able to use the right arm in the right way and it's not in isolation. The right elbow is not in isolation. I'm not trying to hold anything back. I'm trying to make my chest and my lower half move around the golf ball as my right arm is being pulled in front of my chest. Which is making it really simple to isolate what that right elbow and that right arm needs to do. But understand at no point am I trying to chase my arm in front. If I chase my arm more in front and the ball pops out to the right, my right arm isn't going to chase in front. My right wrist is not going to look down. So the right arm really deals with the narrowing of the arc. Because the right arm is effectively starting with some length in it. And then as we get to the top, the right arm has got less length, and it's a narrowing of the arc with the, the right arm, but the left arm has more opportunity to keep a bit more length in it. So this right arm is controlling the radius of the golf swing of the handle. It's not controlling the radius of the club head, but it will have a huge influence. The right arm's controlling the radius of the golf swing. Now the more narrow the radius becomes, the more we'll tend to see overruns with golf swings, long back swings. The wider you make your right arm, the longer you make your right arm, the shorter the back swing will be in the arm length. But if you make the arm length shorter, you better make sure you've got enough hip motion and enough chest motion. So the right arm is a complex being. When I see people standing on the range trying to tuck their right elbow in and then start to flatten out their left wrist and then <laughs> Making strikes like that, it's like, man, good luck with that when you're standing on the tee trying to hit driver. So do the right arm drill, where you've got your left, left hand sitting underneath the right elbow. Make some, make some shots happen. And if you're trying to fix your right arm, as far as I'm concerned, 
you're looking down the wrong track if you're trying to fix that right arm on the way down. Sure, apply some changes to the right arm on the way back, but if you're having to fix the right arm, tuck the right elbow on the, right, on the way down, you are looking under the wrong rock. I think you'll find that's good coaching. I look forward to seeing you next time.